MovieWeb.com. So, so what's up? Erica, I'm writing a story. And it's gonna run tomorrow. And it's gonna say, among other things, that you are a CIA operative. We're gonna fast track the story, your story. I wanna get it on doorsteps tomorrow. No, I know, I know, it's Watergate. It's the wrong country. The paper will be out in two hours. When that story comes out, you'll be out in the open. You did it. This changes everything. You're gonna win a Pulitzer. None of this was my fault. I'm not gonna be punished because there is a traitor among us. Okay, well, my first question is, watching this film and watching the first five minutes of it, right? audiences are so jaded, I'm wondering how difficult it is, is it for you to cast a president that you're happy with? Right. Well, you know, um, well, I, I've not been happy, with Paul, with our presidents uh, for, for a while now, but um, the president in the movie, it's a, it's, a very, it's a very small part, actually, right? So I could just pick anybody, anybody I wanted. It wasn't, um, the beginning of the film uh, shows an assassination attempt on the president, and uh, I, was, um, I, I was more dealing with a presidency than dealing with a president in this film. Well, that's As why opposed I, to other movies. That's, I guess, why I asked you that, because, I mean, everything kind of hinges on those first five minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, well, it stems from that, and it's, right. people tend to, like, tune out when they see somebody that's not the real president, so I, I thought it might be a challenge to have to get the right guy in there for you. You know, um, you know we, we, we had, uh, you know, Scott Williamson playing the president, and I think he did a, you know, he did a, it's a small role, but he did a, he did a fantastic job in it, and I, and it's so fast that I think that people get over it pretty, pretty quickly, and they start concentrating on Rachel Armstrong, the character played by Kate Beckinsale. And, uh, you know, that's really where your attention should be. Uh, her and uh, Erica Van Dorn, mm -hmm. the CIA agent played by Vera Farmiga. Well, I was going to say, Vera and Kate both have such strong personalities. What mm -hmm. sort of a challenge was it to find those two personalities and put them together in this scenario? Because, I mean, you needed, like, two tough yeah, women you, you, you needed Well, you needed women that... Um, I wouldn't necessarily view uh, Kate Beckinsale as, as as tough, you know. Uh, I know she's played tough characters in the past, but she's about as uh, as feminine a personality <laughs> as as you're ever going to meet. And uh, and Vera is a firecracker. I, I you know I really have to say. And when Vera first met me in uh, New York City, I thought she was going to come to me and try to ask me to put her in the role of Rachel Armstrong the lead character in the film played by Kate. But she wanted to play the CIA agent because she felt that that was uh, a role with a lot of sizzle that she could really, really, uh, to use a terrible cliche, sink her, sink her teeth into. Um, but they have amazing, amazing, amazing chemistry in, in the film. Their scenes together are, uh, they're, they're, they're a lot of fun. You can't get too many clips of them because there's so much foul language in them. But they're, <laughs> but they're fun. Now, I want to know, <laughs> I don't want to give anything away, but when we careful, learn yeah. who the yes, source yes, is, right. you, did that change your own view of this character? Well, that's very interesting what, what you're saying, because the, um, when, uh, when, when the movie is over, here's what I'm really ho hoping happens, Paul, which is that it's very clear what happens, but it's very unclear then uh, what, everything that's happened before. That's what becomes sort of unclear. It's one of those movies where you see the ending and you go, I better see this again because I really need to re-examine it. Like at the end of The Sixth Sense, you go back and you watch the movie again to see whether or not all the pieces actually fit. And I think you'll see that they do fit. And what you're talking about are the motivations of, uh, the, uh, of Rachel Armstrong, the character. And, and, the, and if you go and you see the film uh, a second time, I think that those become very clear to you as, as you're watching, as you're watching uh, the movie. Well, I also think that it splits the audience. Some people might be feeling differently right. about no, King's no, that's, character, that's true. and that's it'll true. turn their like that, thoughts that's true. That's 360. True. But the opposing absolutely, you know, um, I, I'm telling you, if you take several of your friends to, let's say, you take three friends mm -hmm. uh, to the movie, you go have coffee afterward. We four different opinions. Yeah, not about the quality of the ending, but about what it means. Exactly. And and that really, um, it's a. It, Look, when I was a film critic, I used to talk about movies with twist endings in this way. I said, the first time, it's good if the first time you see it, you're totally surprised, and the second time you see it, you feel like a moron for not having gotten it in the first place, <laughs> right? Because it's really all there. And um, I think if those same four friends then went and saw the film a second time, 
you all come out with a unity of opinion on, uh, on what's actually going on there. It, you, it's so unexpected, the ending, that you're just not prepared for it. You're not prepared to deal with it. You're not prepared to really think about it. People are really stymied. And they, I, to me, that's kind of cool.